Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, webinar today, which has been presented as part of the ESS BIS Tools program, Tools to Create Opportunities for Accountants, Business Advisors, Chief Financial Officers and Bookkeepers. Today, we're going to look at business health checks for supermarkets. This is advanced benchmarking conducted for the individual business. I'm Peter Towers, Managing Director of ESS Biz Tools. Welcome. If you have any questions during the webinar, can you please type your question into your computer and send it through to me by chat and I will answer it later on. If you're watching this webinar on the live feed to Facebook, welcome. I hope you enjoy our presentation today. If you have any questions, you will have to send me an email. I'm sorry, you can't come direct to us. So please type your webinar address to peter at essbistools.com.au and I will get back to you with a reply. For those of you who are watching this webinar at a time more convenient to you, you're either still at lunch or about to have lunch, or you've got client uh, pressures, and you want to watch the uh, webinar at a later time, that's great. If you have any questions, please send me an email, peter at essbiztools.com.au. Key performance indicators are important because this is the, the real material that we're looking at when we talk about business health checks. So let's just go through some of the items. Normally to identify meaningful key performance indicators, you have to dig in to what's happening within your client's business. This is going well beyond the profit and loss account and the balance sheet and the tax return. This is part of the process that happens daily, weekly, monthly in your client's businesses. And if you're going to be offering chief financial officer services, then you need to have an understanding of what goes on below deck, what's going on in the engine room of the business. And that's where key performance indicators are so important for the leadership team and the team that works directly involved in any of the activities. And I'm gonna talk you through a few of these today. As I said, if you have any questions, please contact me by the chat process or send me an email. It's important that you discuss with the leadership team the appropriateness of key performance indicators. Make sure they understand them. They're the important people in this process, but so are the team members. Do they understand them? Do they understand what the results mean? I found in my own personal experience when I was the chief financial officer of a listed public company, that some of our key leadership team members, and they were the foremen on our major meatworks, did not understand what the key performance indicators that they were receiving every day. Every time they had a smoke -o or lunch break, they had a report handed to them and they didn't fully appreciate what it was telling them. You know what the problem was when I sat down and talked to them? They didn't understand the words that had been produced. It was probably accounting jargon to them. So we sat down and at the lunch uh, break, and said, okay, let's rework this. So I had about 14 people making contributions and we rephrased it so it suited their understanding of the language. And then they embraced the concept. They got enthusiastic about it. They didn't just throw the reports into the rubbish bin, which is what they admitted to me they'd been doing beforehand. So all that effort in producing key performance indicators was being wasted. It was a great lesson to me as a fairly young accountant at that stage. You need to talk to the people at the coalface who have got to use this information 
because it's very important for them to help them better understand their role and to satisfy the demands they're getting from further up the seniority chain in the organization because we made their immediate plant manager a lot happier because he felt that the foremen were better informed and able to be making better management decisions and helping him share the load. So I'd suggest that when you're looking at key performance indicators, don't just accept them at face value, but dig down, make sure that the leadership and the team understand them. And it may be necessary for you to run some training courses for the leadership team and then for the, the workers, the people who are really featuring in this information. What was their productivity? What was the average sale? What was the weight loss in certain areas? What was the fat percentage in some products? And so on. It's very important. Doesn't appear in a profit and loss account. It's not in the balance sheet, and it's definitely not stated in the tax return. But this is important information that your clients need to have. So if you're going to be offering business advisory services, you have to dig down. Discuss with the team if there's any additional information they'd like to know. And you might be surprised the feedback you get to that question too. They'll say, well, if you're measuring all this, why don't you do such and such? Because it's a lot more important for us. We guess it. And we think about it later on and put down a figure. But a lot better if we had an accurate figure. And if we could then compare how it relates to what happened yesterday, last week and two months ago. So this could lead to an expansion of your key performance indicators which are the, the vital documents, vital ingredients that we're looking for in business health checks. We could have just as easy called it a summary of key performance indicators. So let's look at some of the information that pertains to supermarkets because every industry has got its own group of key performance indicators. And I think when you look at a supermarket, we also need in many cases to consider the shopping center because in a lot of su supermarket activities, they're, they're conveniently placed in the middle of a shopping center, aren't they? And many shopping centers now cooperate in making information available. What you've got to work with, with your clients is making sure that you're receiving that information from the shopping center management daily. And in fact, I've heard of some people receiving it hourly. They want to know how many people came into that shopping center in, in the previous 60 minutes. So they can be measuring what they're attracting of that crowd so that they can then determine whether they need more promotional activities at various times in the day because there's 10,000 people entered the shopping center in a given hour and only uh, 20 made it to their shop and they think that figure should be higher. What are they gonna do to get people there? That's what this information can mean to your clients. So how many people entered the shopping center yesterday? How many people entered the supermarket? What's the percentage who entered the uh, shopping center? Now, on its own, that might not mean much. But what happens is that what you're trying to do is compare yesterday's percentage with what happened the day before or the week before or the average that may have been set in the overall planning parameters for the supermarket. What's the expectation? If based on uh, previous figures and on the promotional activities that your client's going to con conduct. Is there an expectation that 3% of the people that come into a shopping center are going to visit this particular supermarket or is it 10% or whatever? 
And then you need to measure it because data is only good if it's measured and examined. Because it might mean that uh, they're targeting 3%, but only got 1% yesterday. That's a lot of people when you look at a supermarket in the middle of a shopping center. What do they need to do to improve their, their promotions? Is it something they need to be doing in the store and promoting that they're doing it? It might be a, a demonstration of uh, the latest bread that uh, one of the manufacturers made, or it might be carving beautiful ham off the bone and handing it out. It might be cooking pizza pieces and handing them out. It might be that there's a special promotion on frozen chickens, doesn't matter what, but that's not your role to determine that. You need to be the custodian of data for your clients. Last week, I attended a very interesting Zoom meeting from California where the uh, keynote speaker, Professor Terry Kramer, who's a senior um, executive, but also a private enterprise entrepreneur, attached to the university, indicated that one of the big issues from now on is data. Data is going to be one of the most powerful components in the business equation. Key performance indicators are an integral part of data. Part of the challenge of supplying business advisory services is to make sure you have a clear understanding of this process so that you can make sure it's been communicated, it's been interpreted in a, in a usable manner to the leadership team, but you don't have to implement it. That's their role. There's marketing managers, there's sales managers, there's salesmen who will activate something, but they need the information. And what they're looking for is variations. They're not really interested if 3% comes in every day. Well, what they might be interested in is saying, what have we got to get to get 4% of the crowd of people coming to this supermarket? Oh, sorry, into this shopping centre, into our supermarket, or 5%. That's the challenge they can then work on. But if the figures are the same every day, 3%, 3%, 3.1, 2.9, 3%, 2 2.9, and so on. Okay, they just say, well, we're on average. But most business people are not happy with being on average, are they? They will then be, or should be sitting around saying, well, how are we going to increase our, um, our share of the market? And what percentage of those people, even when they get to our um, supermarket are going to buy? So the whole system to do with the uh, business health checks is, trying to identify variations from the norm. And this is what the leadership team needs to be brought to their attention so that the variation can be investigated. Again, it's not your responsibility, as I said, but it's to make sure that it's accurate, that it's, it's handed to the leadership team to then get some answers. And it might mean they have to go and have negotiations with the shopping centre management about whether they can do some additional promotions and publicizing those. It might mean that they've got to talk to their, to their um, marketing people about running some additional advertisements or putting more information on social media about an upcoming event. It might mean they've got to do more in-store promotions. That's all right, but they need that basic information and they need to have an, an understanding, a confidence deep down, that the information's accurate. It's the last thing they want to do is go off on a tangent and then find out, oh, there was a mistake made in those figures. You need to make sure that the system that's been put in place is ensuring that the information is accurate because leadership people are going to be making decisions based on this. I think another good area for you to look at as part of this business health checks is to look at benchmarking. 
ESS BizTools does not produce ben benchmarking information, but we use it. We're a subscriber to benchmarking.com.au, which many years ago started as part of the FMRC group at University of New England at Armidale Financial Management Research Centre. Later on, it got hived off and it's now a separate standalone company now operated out of Sydney. They produce some great information for about 250 different types of businesses and they're updating it all the time. And in fact, you can enter an arrangement with them to supply information so that they can be keeping their data pool up to date. I think it's a good idea for you to look at the reports that they produce for various industries, in this case, supermarkets, so that you can be able to communicate with your client to give them an overview of how their business compares to one of the others that have, or the average that's been included in the benchmarking.com report. You won't get as much information out of the benchmarking reports as what you can out of analyzing your own key performance indicators that we're going to show you now or very shortly. But it's all part of this business data. It's very valuable, it's very important for the management of businesses. I think there's also a opportunity for you. I've been running courses like this or discussions, webinars like this, and every so often someone contacts me and said, I got 10 clients in that industry, what could I do? Run your own benchmarking. I've talked a fair bit lately about a, uh, an accounting firm that uh, when I originally uh, found out about them through the Financial Management Research Centre at a conference at Armidale, that they had a specific expertise in merino wool and later on in beef cattle and then in cotton production. It's a firm called Boyce & Co, head office in Coomera, southern New South Wales. And they were, their claim to fame is that they developed benchmarking reports on the merino wool industry which gave the opportunity for individual farmers to be able to compare their operations to the pool. It was all confidential. No one could really see who the star was, although I'm told they always found that the star firm was quite proud to be no, notified and to be known to the group, to be introduced to the group at a conference as to who the best farmer was. And that suited the whole basis of what what they were trying to achieve because then everyone could look at what that particular guy was doing and some of them undoubtedly said we can run our farms better than him that's great that's competition why can't you do that if you've got half a dozen or 10 maybe more different supermarket clients sit down and talk to them say can we do a confidential Benchmarking survey, because the benefit will probably be you're centered on particular geographical areas. North Queensland, Southern uh, Sydney, outer suburbs of Melbourne, inner suburbs of Adelaide. If you've got groups of businesses you can put together. And it mightn't just be supermarkets, of course, it could be any type of business. And do your own benchmarking campaign. And if you're doing that, I'd still subscribe to benchmarking.com so you can show what their figures are showing and have some debate and analysis. I think your role is to help all of your clients as if you were their internal chief financial officer to run better businesses, to improve the value of their businesses. And they all need input. Quite frankly, we all need input. Me, you, everyone, as to how performance can be improved. And this is part of the process you, you can do so. So please think about it. You want to talk to me about it? Please contact me. We can see how you could set up benchmarking analysis comparisons for your clients. You might even set up this full business health check for a number of firms. I think you'd find it very interesting. And I think you'll find very happy clients once you get it underway. You're going to have to communicate with them. You could then produce a monthly or quarterly newsletter to them specifically on the supermarket industry. 
and give them some updates. And just as Boyce and co have become recognized as experts in the merino wool, cotton, beef cattle industries, and a couple of others, I understand, you could become the same. And if you've got that expert status, it adds to your credibility. So please think about it. And there, that's exactly what I just said to you. I remembered my uh, pre-prepared notes. <laughs> I think creating these type of systems for your clients or for a group of clients in a benchmarking type group will definitely add value to your clients because invariably they will be running better businesses. But it'll also add value to your team and your firm. And isn't this interesting work? I know you've got to do tax returns and I'm not one of the knockers of tax returns, but I do see that over the years, the, sh the revenue you can generate from tax returns is going to reduce because of the competitive pressures, the outsourcing and everything else that's happening. What this gives you is some variety, some mix of work to keep your accountants keen and interested and get people interested in joining you because you'll build up this reputation. So I think there's a great opportunity built around a fairly simple thing called a key performance indicator. What do they mean? How can they be used? So we're now going to look at what's contained within the business health check package. We got material on introduction to key performance indicators. We got some articles on using key performance indicators to add value. And I've given you an overview of them already. But you've got actual printouts you can go to and look at, talk to your team, train your team, then talk to clients. And we've got material on benchmarking introduction and giving you the details of benchmarking.com we have a list of the industries that they supply material for. So let's now go and have a look at the business health checks for supermarkets. We're gonna download our workbook from our website in a moment. And we're gonna open BAS 403. BAS stands for Business Advisory Services, not that other BAS. And we had the use of that BAS uh, before uh, the tax office decided to uh, use that name. And then we're going to look at BAS 503 because that's where the final information will get printed. And as a subscriber, you can um, utilize that material. So I'm now going to um, go to our um, material on our website. So I've gone to the ESS Biz Tools website. Those of you uh, who are not familiar with our website, down the left-hand column, we have a list of the various packages that are contained within ESS Biz Tools. Now, if you subscribe to our advanced package, you get all this. And you get any new material which we add during the year. And we've got some exciting new products to be reduced early next year. Built around scaling up of businesses. And we then have some group packages and bundle packages, but everything's included in our overall package for advanced. What we're looking at as part of this uh, webinar is material that's contained within the industry specific advisory package. So within that, we have 
setting charge out rates for tradies, which we conducted a webinar, webinar on a couple of days ago. And we got a future webinar in a couple of weeks time on fee setting for professionals. And also we got a setting retail prices calculator, which both of those documents work very well. Within the business health checks area, we have clothing retailer, commercial builders, pharmacies, transport and supermarkets. And within the package, they also receive our Business Plus newsletter. But we're now going to go in to get the content. And we're going to be, there's a video there you can watch. There's a summary of what's included now. I'm now going to download the content. So what we receive is a list of what's contained in the package. So there's a fair bit of material there and I'm not going to go through that. I've overviewed what it is. There are articles on benchmarking, what if scenarios, calculation of future maintainable profits, valuation of companies. All this comes into link back to KPIs. Break even calculation, data required to complete ratio analysis and so on. And then there's some specific articles. So I'm looking for the business health checks templates. So there it is on the screen there. We had a bit of a hiccup there, but hopefully you can see that now on the screen. First of all, you get the instructions, which tells you how you're going to prepare this report. But I'm gonna skip ahead and show you that. So these are the instructions for BAS 403, which is really the collection of data. So we'll go into there now and so you set this up, obviously, by your name of your supermarket, the location, because this might be done for the an individual brand. Oh, sorry, we got, hello, yes, Jane. Thought I had someone there wanting to talk to me, but I can't. Uh... I can't, uh... oh, you cannot see my screen. Sorry, I've mucked that up somehow. My apology, I'll have another go. I hope that's better now. Can you now see it, Jane? Thank you. Thanks for telling me. Okay, so what we've got in this is the material whereby you enter the basic data. We're, we're looking normally at a month. It's the way we've set this document up. So you're recording the key data as to what's happened. How many days were worked in the period, number of days in the period. So perhaps this business doesn't work Sunday, so there'd be slightly less days. Was there any interruption caused by anything? Floods, fire, bushfires. Uh, what's going on with customers? How many people entered the shopping center? And this is from the information supplied by the shopping center management. 
number of visitors, number of customers, number of internet sales, if they've got any loyalty programs, if they recorded where their customers come from, many businesses do this, what postcodes, so that we have the number of people. Have they asked people why they went to their store and just record those details? Newspaper ad, what got them there? Radio ads, newspaper ads, yellow pages, if they're still using it. Are they supporters of someone that you, your client sponsored, sporting club? They get any complaints, how many? How many suggestions were received? I think this is one of the big opportunities that retailers have, is that uh, they can really capitalize on the value of getting, if they get complaints, making sure they, they get answers uh, for those uh, people and communicate them back to the person that made the complaint. They get any suggestions? How many returns of product? If they use phantom customer reports, you presume you're familiar with phantom reports. They have uh, other people walk around the shopping center and check out um, the store. Was it uh, adequately uh, staffed? Was it, did it have products on every shelf uh, or what are the prices, any sort of thing to get feedback? We can enter the sales data cash sales, internet sales, credit sales via debtors. Then the dissection of the products. I've done some work in fairly big supermarkets uh, and um, some of them have got over 40 departments and they're recording gross profit percentages and contribution to the overall profitability of the business uh, for all those departments. I can remember talking to the senior manager of a major Woolworths store. Uh, my children, when they were going to uni, were working there. And um, he had 42 departments. And he knew the results by Monday afternoon of what had happened in the previous week up to Sunday, he told me. In the week up to Sunday, not the previous week. The week was only half a day earlier. Compare that sort of information that that man was getting to your clients running supermarkets. How often do they know their results of all these departments that we've listed there? Now in our system, you can change these departments around if you wish to make it more applicable to your clients. Number of hours the supermarket's been open. And then we'll get the, from the financial accounts, which are very important to make this whole process work, you could then insert the gross profit for all those departments. We've then got some information on the working owners and principals, just to see how they, they go and to calculate some figures. And that's in line with how benchmarking.com prepare their information. And then an analysis on employees. And breaking the wages down to the individual departments. Because I see no reason why supermarkets shouldn't be getting results down to individual departments, just like Woolworths do, and I'm sure Coles. And the store that I really worked on, and this was a major IGA store. So some of them, I don't know all, but some of them were definitely doing this. What's the staff numbers? What's the hours worked in each area? What, how many accidents, absenteeism, resignation, staff training hours? What's the floor space? What's happening with inventory? And then we had some balance sheet figures that get entered in at the end of the month. Now I know some of our subscribers are using this type of information, probably not down the balance sheet, for some of it on a weekly basis because they're tracking various things in some industries. We then go through the expenses all out of the P&L account because what we're wanting to do is to do some calculations which are going to be done in the worksheet 503. Breaking down insurance. So we'll just move through that. We've got some details there on insurance. 
I think that's very important. Analysis of the net profit. And then a look at the major suppliers. Suppliers have become a big issue in the last 20 months, haven't they? Many of our clients have had to reassess who they were getting supplies from, or probably more particularly what country those suppliers were, I, were located. That's probably not a big issue as such for a supermarket, but some of our clients, it is a very big issue for in other industries, of course. So look at the suppliers. Now that's the sort of information that we are collecting. If any of you, once you become subscribers, have suggestions on further information that you think your clients could benefit from, please tell us. We're happy to include it. Now what I want to do is uh, bring up the BAS 503, and I suspect I'm going to have to new share that again. This seems to change every time we do some of these reports, but still not. So hopefully you can now see BAS 503. And this is where the final report comes back. So you process the information. When you click on to say, produce the report, this is will then be uh, populated by the results. So you're going to get information like the sales increased or decreased from the previous by a percentage point. Uh, the daily sales, the sales per full-time person, sales per hours worked, the dissection into various categories. And what you can do is add further columns to have comparison to previous months. And some people have done that. In fact, we're going to work on that and have that so you can immediately get a comparison across the page as to what's happened previously. Customer program, where, where, which number of customers or what percentage of customers have come from which postcodes? You might find that where the marketing effort your client's been doing is directed is not quite right. How many new customers did you get? What was the average sale to new customers? What was the shopping center visitors percentage to your customers? What about your sources of inquiry? Where, where were the major supply chains bringing people to your client's business? Visitors to store. <laughs> what about the percentage of complaints to the number of customers? What was the gross profit analysis over the various things? We, Previously, we just put in the gross profit amount. We've now calculated the percentage. And again, it's the comparison to previous months. It's very important. What was the gross profit per square meter? What was the break even sales? These are figures you can then compare to the benchmarking.com reports. Wages analysis, percentage of sales. System calculates it all this, and then it calculates your expense analysis on a percentage to sales basis. We are going to be doing some further work on developing these uh, products as more people start to use them, and um, they will be available in the new year. What's the profitability analysis? Statistics looking at accidents and absenteeism and resignations. What changes were there in suppliers expenditure from the previous period? Sometimes it can give you an indicator that something might have changed. You, a particular supplier's expenditure may have gone up significantly. And when you inquire, you find out there's a lot more of that stock left. That might mean that someone's fallen for a a hard luck, hard luck story from a salesman and bought a whole stack of stock. Is it all going to be able to be sold? It's a sort of variation in these figures that can mean something to the leadership team. But if they don't get this information fed to them, they'll probably never know unless they stumble across the stock in the storeroom or in the freezer store. 
And sometimes it can be difficult to do that. In larger companies, a lot, this information is available in one format or another. But in your smaller companies, the SMEs, even the ones that are aspiring to grow, a lot of them haven't got this information. You can set it up so that they will get it. So that's the type of information that's uh, involved in this process. And uh, I hope that that uh, helps you in your understanding of um, how this particular package works. I'm going to go back to our material and look at continuing So this presentation today is, the, is part of our tools to create opportunities. What uh, you can receive in this promotion is seven great products. Your investment's $795 for 12 months access, 24 seven. This ends up at a very low cost, under $20 a week to get access to these packages. So what we've included in this package is that you get seven, but uh, four of them are fixed because they're part of creating the, the firm foundations to be able to offer business advisory services. So we've got the business advisory services training, that's 13 modules. Business Plus newsletter, we produce that 13 times per annum. There's two extra editions in, in May. There's only uh, one every other month and there's none in January. We've got uh, 343 papers on 60 different subject headings that you can badge and send to your clients. And you can also receive the SME needs analysis, which I think is the most important document that we provide in ESS BizTools, because this will facilitate by giving you some points to discuss with a client for you to have a conversation, have a cup of coffee with your client and work through and get them to tell you what they want to know about. It might be succession planning. It might be they don't understand their key performance indicators and they think they should be upgraded. They mightn't understand how uh, their debtor's system could be improved. And they're alarmed when you tell them that their debtor's day is outstanding is up around 90 days. So that's the benefit of the SME needs analysis. But then you can pick three other product packages out of 22. And here's the list. You can, you can have the uh, business health check we just looked at, but this one here, the supermarkets, you just mark E, but there are four other business health checks and we are going to expand that next year. But they might be interested in business planning, tradies charge out rates that we went through on Tuesday, or the professional firms charge out rate or retail and wholesale stock mix pricing calculator. Well, you might have a lot of people talking about buying a business, but we've got a package to help you. Well, you might want to start communicating with your clients so that they have a better appreciation of the services you could offer. So client mentoring and coaching would be a great package for you to start with. There's four packages included in that where you can start communicating on something. Client seminars and webinars. It's the best way to market your accounting firm. Sure, you're going to build up a bit of Dutch courage at times, but you do this a few times, you get used to it. You'll make a few mistakes like I just did then. I hadn't properly um, shown so you could view the, um, the um, screen. Seems to vary, to be honest. Sometimes it works and other times it doesn't. But anyhow, crowdsource funding. You might have clients who are keen to raise some money. They've got no security to offer any security to a lender, but they've got a great business vision and they've got a great team. Well, they might be able to raise capital from the public. It's going very well, crowdsource funding. The knockers said it wouldn't work, but it is working. Australia's just joined the rest of the world. We're about seven years behind them. Debtors management system. 
We got the highest debtors days outstanding in the world. Surely that gives accountants a responsibility to try to do something about that. Get in and analyze your client's debtor system. Most of them haven't got one, not a written system. And try to reduce that debtors days outstanding. Early stage innovation company. It's part of the innovation journey. The government specifically created a whole journey We've had research and development for many years. We then have the accelerating commercialization grant. We've now had for about 10 years. And now for the last three years, we've got early stage innovation company. They're all part of a journey. It's well worth looking at. Incidentally, if you asked any of your clients if they are doing research and development, I think there'll be well over um, 22, 23,000 applications this year for research and development. A lot of them could be interested in early stage innovation company. Government grants. My assistant in our office here, uh, Evelyn does a great job on government grants and every day there's more and more and more that have to get added to our ESS BIS grant system. That system was developed to assist accountants to identify grants because they're a great referral system to your clients. Clients are happy to get government grants. They're saving money. And they think you're interested in them if you alert them to them, because they won't know about them. The only time they really find out about them, I think, is on a Friday night if they're in a hotel or a club or somewhere and they hear, <coughs> pardon me, one of their competitors bragging that they got a grant. And they're not very happy if they don't know anything about it, because they say, well, why didn't my accountant tell me that this grant existed? Leadership modules. We've got four modules out of 16 are in this system, 16 in the total advanced package, but four modules to help you with your leadership skills. And you never know, you might want to conduct some leadership training for one of your clients one day. Personal property securities register. I don't like that legislation, but whether I like it or not doesn't matter. It can be very detrimental for some of your clients if they are unaware of it and haven't registered assets on the personal property securities register. I think accountants should be a walking encyclopedia on this legislation so that you can be monitoring your clients. And one of the biggest problem areas is tradey type businesses because they can get caught out on claims from liquidators relating to preferential payment claims because of the payments they've received from a client. So it's well worth your time in understanding. Selling a business, there's still plenty of that going on. The SME Debt Assistance Manual, that's a template system whereby you modify it to suit your client's systems, requirements, and then they've got a written system. So the person that's got that responsibility, he's got something to guide them. A lot of people don't give them that. Succession planning, it also keeps on happening, doesn't it? How can, how can, your, how can you help your clients? And survival in difficult times. Well, we've still got difficult times. I think we're always going to have difficult times somewhere in Australia, in some industries. There's 38 questionnaires in that package. It's very comprehensive. You work through with your client, you get the answers, and then what we've done is interspaced articles, reports, if you like, commenting about debtors' days outstanding, commenting about succession planning, commenting about their key performance indicators. What's a good system? That, those types of notes. So that you can then supply those to the client so they've got something to really look at. And what's all this do? It gets the client to have an appreciation of the broader role you can play to help them run a better business, to add value to their businesses. Clients don't really appreciate this if your traditional role has been annual accounts and tax returns, and you really have shown no, out, no outward changes. Even though you may have subscribed to our products, they need to be marketed and promoted. And that's why in those four key product packages that we've said are an integral component of this package that we're offering, 
They are basically marketing tools to help you communicate and market. Anyhow, you pick three out of those 22. If you need more information, please send me an email and we will send you the special brochure. But it's a pretty low cost, isn't it? $795. If you want our, our starter package, there's, a, there's 17 packages in that as compared to seven in this one. And that's a, con a payment of only $995 for 12 months access. And those prices include GST. So I look forward to hearing from you. Our next webinar is looking at um, crowdsource funding, equity raising. I talked about this before. I've been a key, keen, a key, keen fan, if I can say that, of crowdsource funding since it started about three and a half years ago now. It got off to a bit of a shaky start to start with. The government then changed some of the rules. It's available for private companies and unlisted public companies. If you've got a client that's currently in a partnership, you could think of planning this through. It like, doesn't matter if they only formed the company two days ago. But it gives your clients the opportunity to be able to raise up to $5 million in a 12-month period from the market. And companies are doing it. So we've got that webinar on next Tuesday, 26th of October at 1 p.m. Please join us. We have another one on Wednesday, the 27th, where we're going to look at presenting mentoring uh, seminars and webinars to help with communications, to help you to be able to tell your clients that you can do all this. And um, on Thursday, we got uh, looking at the leadership modules. I attended a very interesting webinar yesterday on leadership. Leadership's a fascinating area, isn't it? And um, I just wanted to have a look at what other people are promoting. So I had a look at someone else's webinar on leadership, but it's very, it's a very broad subject, of course, with leadership. And um, it was quite interesting, very well presented. So our contact details, please send me an email, peter at essbiztools.com.au. Or you can telephone me on 1-800-232-088. But best of all, why not visit our website, www.essbiztools.com.au. And I've sort of said our new website, brand new. Have a look at it. And if you want to, please register for a mentoring session, one hour with me. I'll take you through it. I'll give you a prescription of what I think you should have in the package to suit your clients, your team, your firm. And we don't charge you for that one hour. You just book the time and um, we will then be talking to you sometime in the next couple of weeks. So thank you very much for joining us for this webinar today. We have recorded the webinar. We will be sending you a link to the recording. If you want any further information, please contact me. So thank you very much. And uh, I hope you uh, have a great day and that uh, I hope you found that this presentation will help you have a better understanding of how you can really use key performance indicators to improve the business health of your client's business and therefore help them to add value to their businesses. Stay safe. Have a good day. Bye-bye.